Five. Good morning, everyone. Paula Madison Sierra here with another episode of 10 at 10. This morning, we have Jason Steinberg of Steinberg Imagery on with us, and he's going to be sharing some information on how to properly use our cell phones. As you know, you know, we have these great things in our pockets, and do you really know how to use it effectively? I'm thinking most people don't. Jason's going to share for those real estate salespeople out there, brokers, designers, uh, um, restaurateurs, you know, to grab your phone and be able to really share an experience would be uh, fantastic. So, Jason, good morning. Thanks for being on today. Uh, good morning, Paula. It's good to be here. Thanks for, for uh, participating, you know. So tell us a little bit about yourself before we uh, get started. So videography is such a new concept in the landscape. Um, uh, how did you get into this? Uh, you know, what's what, what's this all about? Tell us where you came from. Well, I came from a journalism background. You know, I discovered photography, uh, photojournalism specifically, while in excuse me, in the mid nineties, when I moved to Los Angeles, I would meet these unique individuals and nobody back home would believe me. So I thought, well, let me make some pictures and share with them these characters that I was making, like the guy in Venice who has the turban with the dashiki and the electric guitar and the amplifier on his back, all while skating. <laughs> Everyone thought I was making these things up. Uh, so, you know, it was natural to pick up a camera and through that, they started putting video mechanic, mechanics into the little DSLR. And of course, you hear Mike a, going off, interrupting you, by the way. Oh, <laughs> so it was a natural transition, you know, storytelling with pictures through my photojournalism career. And we all know how the um, journalism world is these days, especially newspapers. Um, so I still wanted to remain true with storytelling and creating video to help businesses and corporations and individuals out just seemed like a natural fit. So do you also work with smaller business owners or is it just large corporations? Well, some business owners weigh less than others. So, you know, I guess you could say I work with smaller business owners. Um, but yeah, the mom and pop family shops, mm -hmm. you know, absolutely. Um, you know, from multiple uh, multinational corporations, the worldly, you know, it's just who's ever got the story, I'm willing to participate. Yeah, you know, and I find that now video is like king, isn't it? I mean, everyone would rather watch a video than read something, you know? And so sharing that story and building that intimacy just seems like a natural fit right now, you know? I mean, I miss the days of the newspaper. I missed having something tangible to hold on to. Um, but yeah, reading on a screen, reading on a phone, it's just, uh, it's, it's turning the pages isn't as much fun. Yeah. So to be told a story, to watch it, like how we've grown up with TVs, mm -hmm. it's just natural. I mean, as kids come up, I mean, the millennials are business people now. That's all they do. That's all they want is to be told what the information is. Then they can go back further to research and read about it if they need to. Yeah. So it's all about the quick, concise message. So how are you seeing business owners actually using these videos? So we, you know, we make a video, we spend the money, we put the time in, we use the video, we create a video. Um, how are some of the ways that you're seeing it being used out there? Um, the goods or the bads or the in-betweens? I, I would love to hear everything. What's the bad that we should absolutely, because clear, let's start there. I, I love, what. what is the bad? What should we not do? <laughs> we should not create a bunch of videos and dump them on our website and walk away and just expect magical things to happen. And that's what a lot of people do. So it's, I've developed more of a subscription plan. I've developed marketing strategies. Um, I'm working with colleagues such as yourself to help strategize, to implement ideas, um, just to share it in the visual marketplace. Thank you, Angie. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, um, what I one of the things I love doing as well, and a lot of people who get emails from me will probably see this. I took my video and I actually put it into my signature item as well. And I have to really? tell 
you know, to, like I've so far gotten four actual clients from this because someone forwarded it to someone else who forwarded it to someone else because of information. Cause you know, you're sending out an email. So sometimes it gets legs based on the topic, right? For right. So it, it, it pays to tell your story and be impassioned about it. It's like, why are your whys have to be big, right? So why have I started this business? What service am I offering? What do I, what am I trying to accomplish? Being able to share that through video is fantastic. You know, of course you just exposed me as the cobbler's kid, you know, cobbler's kid has no new shoes. And do I have a video in my signature? I will later today. I, I'm bad. Uh, you know, doing this show has actually been great because I've been getting all of this fantastic information from folks like yourself. And so every time I get it, I've been implementing it. It's like, oh, wow, let me put that into play. You know, <laughs> let me, right. do, you know, so um, no, totally, you know, and actually one of the things I'm noticing that quite a few people do is, you know, they're, they want to get so deep with the videos. It's like, well, I'm going to set up a studio in my house. I'm going to do all of this. But shouldn't you be right? What's your thought on that? Because my thought is you should be running your business, not trying to become a video storyteller like Jason, who has the eye for it. I don't know. That's just my thought. Or can they actually, I mean, I guess you can learn anything. Of course you can learn anything. I mean, you know, but ultimately time is money. You know, do you have the time? Do you have the money to do that? I think having the home studio, like such as, kind of what you've been doing with the live 10 at 10, it's complementary to the larger scope of things. Yeah. Such that, you know, cause I mean, you put together a video marketing campaign. It's a series of videos, anywhere between three to six to 12 to, you know, more than that. And in between all those releases, you might wanna, you might have a topic that you wanna share. Like, where can I find the best cup of coffee? You know? and share a little insight and you know work with it uh uh is that the third cup you've had so far like I, I, it's pro it's the same cup right okay all right it's the same cup all right never mind um so a cup of I, coffee are you are you managing my cups of coffee here like do i need to have a certain intake is there a <laughs> level of caffeination that i need to be aware of here <laughs> you know uh I, I, thanks mom oh you're welcome you know <laughs> What, just to share with everyone, because we're going to get right into like all the tips uh, in a little bit. But just to preface, one of the things that we're trying to say right now is we're, we're not saying that you're, you know, these are all the tools to become a big time videographer like Jason and, you know, do all these huge campaigns. You know, however, you know, there are those moments, again, as a real estate person, designer, restaurateur, something amazing happens. You want to pick up your phone and you want to do that well and you want to share that very organic moment. Those look really fantastic mixed in with the more professional items as well. And those you're probably going to do more regularly. So if you're going to do it, so it complements your brand, let's make sure that we know um, exactly uh, what we're what we're saying here, you know, so. Um, let's roll right into, um, uh, 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 I'm on my third cup of coffee too. <laughs> See, <laughs> I'm you. telling you, like yeah. it's, it's just enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. <laughs> so let's roll right in there. Um, tip number one. Tip What's number one. Oh, oh God. Let me find my quick list. Cause I, I wouldn't want to get the tips out of order. Uh -oh. Stabilize your video. Be mindful that the herky jerky stuff. I mean, we don't need to give vertigo to people who don't need to have vertigo. I mean, nobody needs to have vertigo. So, a stabilizer, something like this. Um, you want something that can hold your phone steady and, you know, create some motion with the dynamics of shooting. If you don't have a stabilizer, Learn how to breathe in the sense that you're holding your phone. Give me one second. Let me pop this thing out. Oops. Got to turn it off because it wants to stabilize without it. There we go. All right. So if you're holding your phone, tuck your elbows into your body and exhale. And film. 
and film for five to 10 to 15 seconds of footage of a scene that you want. Let the scene kind of come and go and work to tell the story. So stabilizing so, is very saying, important. So we're not, uh, where's my phone? So, because sometimes I've seen clients offer me videos and go, hey, can you get someone to edit this for me? And you see these quick movements and they're they're trying to get everything because they're trying to you know be like the movie. So n no to that then. Well, the reason why people are doing that, and this is my theory that I've concluded, is that it's like a snapshot. You know, you make a picture here, then you move there, and then you move over here and there. But with video, you have to let it breathe. You have to sit here with the scene and then transition over here. Don't be so quick because when you're quick like that, it's like watching those old honeymoon videos that you would watch on VHS, you know, back in the eighties. And it's like, you know, afterwards you wanted to puke because you got car sick. I know, I know. So question, those stabilizers, are they very expensive? Are they affordable? You know, um, because it sounds like these are things that we should just probably have as part of our, our tool set. Um, I mean, are they expensive? If, if people are creating videos for the marketing purposes, the investment is real. I mean, this was $160. Okay. There are some that are cheaper. There are some that are more expensive. This is specifically designed for small cameras such as a smartphone or a GoPro can fit nicely in this. Okay. Um, 160 bucks, it's worth its weight in gold. Um, what about, is there anything down at the $50 market, the $20 market? Um, are those still as as good? You know. Yeah, that, that's that's called a tripod. <laughs> I mean, it's technology. You get what you pay for. I mean, you want to spend fifty bucks and you want to be cheap. It's going to be herky jerky. It's going to be bouncy. It's going to be moving. So you might as well just get a. And what about a selfie stick? Could that help as well? Ish. But, you know, depending on how far you have it extended, I mean, a selfie stick, you're going to, like, if you just hold it with one hand out there, I mean, how heavy is it? I mean, for, oh. for example, how heavy is this, this right now? Well, for two seconds, it's not very heavy. But if you hold it for a prolonged period of time, your arm, like, your shoulder, everything starts to fall apart. It's getting shaky. Okay. All right. I see where you're going. So our first one is a stabilizer then. Um, stabilizer. What's our tip number two? Audio. Audio is king. You can have a terrible video. You can have a fuzzy picture. You can have an out of focus picture. But if your audio is clean, people will at least listen to it. They won't be completely annoyed. I mean, they can put the video in the background on their desktop and listen to the quality. So my tip for that is everybody's smartphone at one point or another came with some headphones. Paula, did you realize that in these headphones, because you know, I'm sure you do a lot of conference calls, that they come in with a built-in microphone. Yes. So why is that important? Well, it's just like making a, a quality picture. You know, you could be at the Eiffel Tower, and if you're four miles away from it and you pull out your phone, you know, the tower is like this little big, you know, in the, into the, the corner. Um, Angela, um, Angela from uh, uh, San Diego wants to know if there's any other tips about not making the audio too noisy, I guess, picking up other sound. Angela, how is the audio right now? Give us a thumbs up, Angela. Let us know. Because uh, yeah, just right now I'm practicing what I'm preaching and I'm utilizing headphones that were given you know, from my smartphone. Nice. You plug that in because the trick about having the noise is that you got the microphone, it's right here by your throat, your voice box. When you have that there, you're blocking the sounds behind you. Uh -huh. You're minimizing it. It's never gonna be perfect, but you at least minimize it. I mean, my neighbors have like a whole bunch of chickens. There's dogs in my neighborhood. Like there's all sorts of outdoor noises. But minimizing that, blocking it here, it helps. Nice. Thanks, Angie. I'm glad it sounds good, Angie. You know, so um, what's our tip number three? Tip number three 
framing. Framing, what Com does that mean exactly? Composing the image. I mean, here on the video chats, it's pretty much a standard norm to have somebody right here in the center. But if you have looked at any of the classic painters, the classic visual artists, there's this thing called the rules, the rule of thirds, where over here, you know, if, if you imagine, you know, you got, you divide your screen into threes. Mm -hmm. So you have a whole, you have the vertical line here and a vertical line over here. But then if you, to fill the frame, you want to be facing this way and you have all this motion coming in and talking here, because if I was talking this way, it looks a little weird, right? Yes. With the framing. Yeah. Whereas if I'm back this way towards, you know, the camera and allowing the space, it gives breathing room. You could have a little pop up. Yeah, like a I don't know, logos or whatever. Like a shry popping up and saying, "Hey, <laughs> you know, thanks, shry." Um, so, so framing. Okay, so again, think of the screen as a third. Um, the main center area would be in the center, and then overflow on each side. Not as a, that. That's almost correctly understood. It's not that you would have Lots your face like here in the center and yeah. the center third and then, but it's like, okay, you have that center area, but you want to be right here. Okay. So you're like halfway between the two thirds. Okay. I see. And then on top of it, you have the thirds coming in from the top this way. So here we go. We got this because if you look at, um, when people do sunset photos, mm -hmm. you know, the greatest one, A, you can have some good colors, but the best ones are when the horizon line is at one of those thirds. Mm. Because if you are here and the sun's popping up or popping down, it's more dynamic when your horizon line is at, at the bottom third or at the top third, depending on what kind of elements that you want to include there. So when you're considering it, should you consider both the vertical and the horizontal thirds? Absolutely. Oh, nice. Absolutely. If you want to take it to that next level. Okay. So framing makes a difference. Break it down into thirds. Nice. And okay. most smartphones have a grid option when you're filming. Hey, Turn Sandeep. that on. Yeah. Hello, Sandeepa. <laughs> Thanks for tuning <laughs> Having the grid on, it just, it, it, subconsciously you start putting things in on the line and it helps frame everything much quicker. You don't have to think about it as much and eventually it just becomes second nature. Nice. Okay. I love that. Okay. Actually, that's a really good tip. And me as a marketer, I didn't know about the framing. So um, blowing my mind, Jason. Um, okay. <laughs> number four. What's your number Conciseness. four? Conciseness. Keep it short. Keep it sweet. Keep it on point. Nothing worse than people. Um, yeah. Um, uh, I, I can't stand the ums and the ahs they're, they're, because they're thinking of what they want to say. Know what you're going to say, write it out. You don't want to read it like, Oh, today we're going to talk about the weather the weather is great. And here we are, you know, you don't want to do that sort of thing, but practice it. The more you practice, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, that networking group that we're a part of, you know, with BNI, your infomercials. Yeah. The more you practice it, the more you know your stuff. Thank you, Sandeepa. <laughs> the easier it is to translate and to get your message out quickly and moving on to the next point. Nice. See, conciseness. Conciseness, all right? And making sure you're right, because really just having some bullet points laid out really helps with the flow, doesn't it? Absolutely. Okay. All right. Absolutely. Tip number five. Lighting. Lighting. Okay. Lighting. Yeah. Be careful of your lighting. Make sure you have quality light. You know, if you're doing video, have the light source be close to you so that you have higher quality. You know, be mindful of light. I, you know, looking at you today, by the way, you look fabulous. I love how the hair is all perked up with the little curls popping out. You notice that we, you got the memo, so we're both doing glasses and ponytail. Right, we, you know, we are a team here. That 
normally I would be like, oh no, God, you got that big old white light behind you. But with the contrast of your complexion, it highlights the beauty of your hair. It, it, you pop out from the scene. You don't just blend in to the shadowy background, which, you know, had you not had that light back there, you would kind of disappear except for the whites of your eyes. Yeah. And having that contrast, like with your chair, that helps as well. well you just you me, pop out in the scene. Well, let me, um, uh, thanks, Sandy, you know. So let me ask you, if someone does not have like all the big lighting and a friend like Jason to advise them, you know, um, are there some basic things that you can do when you're doing a video? If you're pulling up your phone really quickly and you want to do like a quick about or something like that, is there something really quickly that we should know about lighting? Because I mean, there was one tip that you told me, which was beware of the sun, which I thought the sun was my friend. The sun is an awesome thing. The sun is your friend when it's at the magic hour of, you know, sunrise and sunset. High noon, there's nothing worse than seeing a bunch of uh, raccoon eyes, you know, with the sun being coming in, you know, the shadows of your eyebrows. And then all of a sudden you got these dark big circles there and nobody can see you. You look like a raccoon. Okay. <laughs> so it does kind of that, feel though, all the color, doesn't it? Yeah, well, you know, there uh, a theater technician uh, kind of shared this insight with me once. There are two people in this world. There are moths and there are cockroaches in this in the stage lighting world. Oh, when what? the lights turn on, what does a cockroach do? Runs. It does. It scurries into the shadow of the night. It disappears. Yeah. But a moth, a moth flutters to the light. It finds the light. It lets the light come into them. <laughs> <laughs> so you oh, want to like technology. A, Where are we going? <laughs> the idea is you want the light to come into you and you know, you want that little spot of reflective light in your eye. Oh. Look at all the major advertising magazines. Look at all the front page ads that are in those magazines. Look at the eyeballs of each model. There is a dot of light. If oh. there isn't, you immediately flip the page because you it just doesn't pop out at you. you it's it appears like they don't have a soul. Oh wow. So there's that it's called a catch light. So you get that little twinkle in their eyes and voila. Beautiful. I like all of these things that I actually did not know about um at all. <laughs> so um really great tips today, Jason. As we're like wrapping up, so can you just kind of review really quickly um, the 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 item, all of the items today? So we have five great tips. I'm excited about like um, uh, um, kind of applying them to myself. Notice I did the ums, um, and um, <laughs> can you review? Practice right, makes perfect. Yeah. Or permanent. Yeah, exactly. So um, run through them for us as we're closing out. Number one, a stabilizer. Stabilizer. Avoid the bouncy filming. I love the Avoid bouncy. Avoid the fast filming. No bouncy. Stay with the scene. Enjoy okay. it. Okay. Number two, headphones. The headphone jack that came with your phone has a microphone built in. I mean, if you don't, if you think the white is distracting, you can A, tuck it in. You could even cut the earbuds off, I'm sure everybody has at least three or four pairs of these at home. Do you use them all? No, but just in case someday I lose one, I'll have an extra. You could take your scissors. No, don't cut the buds. I feel and, so religious. <gasps> and cut it. You can put some black electrician's tape on it and it will disappear. You oh didn't see God. mine, did you? It's disappeared. Oh, you're right, because I, but, okay, that makes sense. All right. Framing. It's a little scary the to. Uh, hurt. <laughs> I'm sorry? I said, it's kind of a little scary to have to cut the buds. <laughs> Don't cut it, Jason. You I know, know right? <laughs> um, I'm looking at it like, what did I do? No. Um, <laughs> number three. Number three, concise. No, short. Framing. framing. Oh, framing, you're right, framing. See, look at you looking at my notes. How did you do that? Um, anyways. I see everything. Yes, <laughs> that's why you're the specialist. Uh, framing, wait, number three. Yes, framing, rule of thirds. 
See, in my mind, I'd already said that and I already moved on and I was being concise with the whole program. Nice. And number four is? Concise. <laughs> Keep it brevity. Keep yes. it short, sweet, and simple. Nice. Give a quick tip. Move on. Let people hunger for more. And that's what the next video will be about. If you do a 10, 20, 30, 40 minute video talking about the one thing with all the ums and ahs and not getting to the point, people will tune out quickly. Okay. Okay. And, then, and lastly, lighting. lighting. You know, be aware of the light. Let it shine on people's faces, you know, whether it comes across halfway or whatever, but don't go directly into the sun if they don't have the ability of, of setting up some lights because then people start squinting, you know, so they're, they're, you either get the raccoon eyes from noon o'clock light coming straight down on you or, you know, when the sun's too brightly in your eyes, you squint. Can I ask you on um, just to wrap up the uh, number five, uh, what's the best time of the day if you don't have all the professional lighting to do something like that? What, what would be the optimal point of the day? Um, in the Bay Area, you know, especially San Francisco, you know, pretty much all day works because we have a blanket of fog or high clouds. So it's nice and soft and even. So any time of the day usually works. Try to stay away from noon, like it, stay away from 1030 to three o'clock, right? If you can avoid it, avoid it. If you can't find the shade of a tree, find the shade of a building and utilize that to soften the light on your face. Nice, nice. Because, you know, we do have folks who check in from across the country as well. You know, the East Coast, they're all about the what? sun right now, you know, so. <laughs> yeah, so with that, you know, find the shade of a tree or find the shade of side of a building. Um, you know, just be aware of your background. Okay, all right. That sounds great. All right, well, let's wrap it up today. Um, you know, uh, thank you, thank you, Shry. Um, uh, Angie, Sandeepa, um, tune in and all of those folks later who will be re-watching this as well. Um, thank you to my guest today, Jason Steinberg of Steinberg Imagery. Um, thank you, Paula. By the way, by the way uh, Jason uh, offers um, a little bit of a workshop that he does with, uh, can you share that with us, Jason? Yeah, right now what I'm looking for is a large real estate firm. Uh, a lot of real estate agents are creating their own selfies of listings. And I would love to assist them by coaching them on best tips and practices, kind of like what we just went through. But with real estate, you know, with showing a home, there's a couple of things that, you know, they could utilize specifically for their needs. They don't have to show the whole house. Show the high, show the the favorite parts, the best parts, the most appealing curb, you know, the curb appeal okay. and keep it short and sweet. That way, you know, you entice them to come in to actually step inside and look at it. Nice. And you're, you've already started those workshops or about to start those workshops, right? Yeah. I'm finalizing a workshop here in the East Bay um, next month in September. And that's um, the day of San Francisco. <laughs> yes. Yes. Excuse me. It's, it's all about the East West over here in, in our Western Bay area. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we are going to be talking to about a hundred agents and we're going to walk through a class on, you know, where they can get, you know, a stabilizer utilizing a microphone headphone situation so that they just get the crispest, crispest, clearest audio possible. <laughs> so and that you're very crisply just now, Jason. Yes, I'm, I'm, you know, being mindful of the, the popping of the microphone. Um, you know, well, yes. thank you so much for being on today. Um, this is Paula Madison Sierra uh, with another episode of 10 at 10. Um, our continuing mission, I can now see you have it in my head about the uh, ums and ums, but our continuing <laughs> mission is to share information from my great referral partners to help you not only with your business, but with your life as well. This is a gratitude from us to all of those people who've uh, been out there in my networking scope helping. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, give us a thumbs up, please. Share this video with others. We really appreciate it. Go check out Jason's page. Check out my Power Marketing Facebook page and our websites.
Thank you again for tuning in. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.